Greetings! Today I would like to show you my implementation of a disciplined mechanical pendulum. The pendulum arm is around 1 meter long and its period is 2 seconds. The pendulum is housed in a temperature control enclosure. It is regulated to a 10 MHz crystal oscillator or it can also be referenced to an external reference such as a GPS derived 10 MHz oscillator or a rubidium oscillator. This is an ongoing project I have been working on for a few months now. For the whole development story, please refer to my website, whose address is listed in the description text below. Let's start by having a look at the control side of the pendulum. This here is a custom-made PCB. Um, it has two microprocessors, or two microcontrollers, I should say. The first one here, it's PIC Micro, of course, um, is to measure the pendulum period and to compute a pulse duration to be sent to the electromagnet to accelerate or slow down the pendulum. It also provides raw data to a serial port and to the LCD display. Uh, the second pick is for the actual formatting and command uh, sending to the LCD display. I've decided to use two different picks simply because they're so cheap and so easy and so small that I didn't want to have to manage priorities, interrupts and so on. So I decided to make it two functions on two separate microcontrollers. Uh, um, the pendulum is measured the period is measured against this temperature uh, compensated crystal oscillator. It's a 10 megahertz oscillator. Uh, but I can also use an external reference, uh, which would be best uh, because this TCXO, although quite good, will vary uh, its frequency as a function of ambient temperature. And we're trying to defeat that. So using an external reference is best if you're going to do long-term and short-term measurements in a very accurate fashion. Uh, I use a Bluetooth dongle. It's a serial port dongle uh, to send data to the PC. The same data that is sent to the LCD is also available uh, on this serial port uh, for further analysis and, and graph uh, plotting. Um, over here we have the LCD. The LCD shows um, various information, such as the, um, the offset uh, from uh, 2 seconds uh, for the pendulum, the pulse width, and an average of this offset over a 20 second period. It also shows the time, even though this is truly uh, optional. I show the time here. It is controlled by the pendulum, but it's it's like making this pendulum a real clock. That's the only reason why I put the, the time there. And I can set the clock using serial port. On the temperature control side, I have this off-the-shelf, bought on eBay, temperature controller, currently set to 30 degrees Celsius. It will start to heat at 30 degrees, and it will uh, Pardon. It will start to heat at 29.5 degrees and stop at 30 degrees. Right now it's not heating up because it has overshot the temperature 30 degrees. Uh, this is a solid state switch uh, that controls the AC current going to the heating elements inside, which you're going to see later. So right now it's not heating up the box. And so that's the control side. There's another remote PCB inside the box which we'll see later. So what you see is the control board inside the enclosure and the two main functions of this board is detecting and, me and sending a pulse to measure the period of the pendulum using this opto detector 
you can see at the end of the pendulum arm there is a needle that comes in the slot of the opto detector and blocks the light and this is what is used to measure using the PIC microcontroller measure the period of the pendulum the other function of this board is the pulsing so energy transfer to the pendulum you can see the electromagnet here on the back and there is a small permanent magnet stuck underneath the pendulum and there is pulsing so energy sent and the duration of the pulse is adjusted accordingly to maintain accelerate or slow down the pendulum swing or period if you wish the wider the swing the longer the, the pendulum period and that's essentially what this board does and like I mentioned it's connected directly to the controller board on top of the enclosure now on the pendulum itself uh, this is a hardwood boom or arm and it's made of uh, oak wood um, and the grain is longitudinal inside the piece of wood not uh, transversal and the reason for this is coefficient of expansion with thermal variations and wood is better than metal um, I have this weight here it's lead it's a weight that I recovered from a kitchen faucet um, shower that's what pulled the hose back into the unit and it's quite heavy I'd say it's probably probably at least one kilo or like two two and a half pounds something like that and I adjust the height of that weight to get closest to a two second period right so one second one second one second and so on and uh, this uh, at the end as mentioned before I have a very small piece of aluminum uh, that acts as a needle and there's a magnet stuck underneath you cannot see it unfortunately um, I shave some material on the arm so that it's thinner in this axis uh, so it sweeps less uh, into the air I could have done an even better job and profile it like a, uh, some sort of a, like a airplane wing or, or whatever a very uh, a thin surface with sharp edge but I thought it was overkill anyway since I do compensation in real time for mounting the pendulum arm I used a hard disk drive bearing that is inserted inside the boom and it's fastened to the enclosure top through these brackets that I made and screws so this is a very high quality bearing and it supports the entire weight of the pendulum and it works very well it's almost frictionless and cheap if you consider that all disk drives have that this is the the uh, the bearing unit um, that is used on this the head the seeking head itself not on the platter So for uh, heating the box, I've uh, installed three power resistors on heat sinks. Here's one, the second, and the third. And these are in series. These are 100 ohm, 50 watt power resistors. Three of them put in series on 120 volt AC. And I have heat sinks to help dissipate that heat otherwise it would be too much for the resistors anyway 
and uh, so they come on and off, on and off, to maintain the temperature inside. So it's about uh, 15 watts per resistor right now. 15, 16 watts per resistor. So we're about 45 watts of heating uh, inside the box. Um, and uh, I've, I've, you notice I also installed some insulation. This is pink packaging foam. It's quite dense and it's full of air and it's sealed. It's not a, an air foam, what you'd call it. Uh, this is really insulating quite well and it helps uh, regulate the inside temperature. Um, it does it does help. I could I could notice it by about 20 percent though it's not perfect and uh, but this is recovered you could use any insulation and that'd be fine. I also put some on the door but I made sure to keep an opening and I have a piece of foam I can fit on the outside to also insulate this part of uh, the door but it works quite well like that. I didn't mention it, but this is the resistive temperature um, unit, and this is what's connected to the uh, controller, temperature controller, and this is what senses the internal um, enclosure temperature. Forgot to mention that I installed in the, four, in the four corners some adjustment some feet uh, that can adjust the level of the box and make sure it's really sturdy you do not want this box to wobble due to uh, pendulum vibration so it really has to be adjusted right here in this room with a raised floor I can perceive vibration when I walk uh, through the door frame uh, that is next to the box. It quite easily perceive that. So the final test needs uh, this box to be put on a concrete floor uh, to reduce the external uh, vibration uh, because for development purpose it's good here in this room but it's unfortunately there's enough vibration though you'd think that just walking slowly wouldn't change anything but nope you can perceive it on the graph. It, it is influenced by external vibrations. I could probably even say that uh, any uh, earthquake will be picked up by this uh, pendulum also. And uh, so that's pretty easily uh, done and you adjust three of them and then the fourth one you tighten until the box you try to vibrate the box and make sure it's really uh, stable and it doesn't really move at all at the bottom. And also use a level to make sure the box is at level. Now let's have a look at a few pictures. This first picture shows uh, the aluminum uh, pendulum arm I used uh, initially in the development of this project. You can clearly see uh, the hole drilled at one end. This hole received the hard disk drive um, bearing and uh, it was just a snug fit just a perfect fit now it's an aluminum boom and I quickly realized that not all materials are uh, born the same way as far as thermal expansion coefficients and as you can see on this table aluminum is not so good compared to for example wood in this case oak wood in longitudinal grain. So I dropped this aluminum boom and went to um, oak wood pretty quickly. On this other picture you can see the needle that crosses or interrupts the light if you wish in the opto detector. Talking of opto detector here's one I recovered from an old Epson inkjet printer. There were actually two devices like this in the printer, so I have one spare for future usage. Now let's look at the software I use on my PC to monitor uh, the uh, pendulum for performance. Uh, this was written in Python. 
Um, what you have here is two curves and uh, the top one shows the offset uh, measured offset from the crystal oscillator of that pendulum and it's the offset from two seconds um, so right now the last sample as you can see is 1.9999981 and then the next one it does averaging over 10 periods and it will compute a new average period and this in turn is um, shown as a new point here a data the top so the top curve shows the offset and of course zero here mean means uh, it's exactly two seconds on the nose and this is not a big uh, deviation here we're talking of uh, less than one part per million last one being 0.2 uh, the the bottom curve shows the duration of the uh, impulse given to the pendulum so the duration of the pulse sent to the electromagnet and as you can see here there's a slow ripple this ripple as you would have guessed is due to the temperature variations inside the enclosure this corresponds to a 0.5 degree variation of the enclosure uh, temperature uh, so the pulse duration is adjusted to compensate for variations in temperature to keep this a very small ripple if this was not done you would see very large variations on the pendulum you can still see some sort of a trend here and this would mean that I can probably tweak the FLL parameters to dampen this oscillation even more so essentially react with longer pulse variations to try to maintain this uh, to a uh, uh, near more near zero here but it's a it's a balancing act so there's a lot of tweaking possible on that FLL um, software or firmware in the PIC. The other thing to mention is here, you wonder, I'm sure, I uh, walked around the box, uh, played with it, uh, gave a demo actually of um, the, uh, the box, and of course this is mechanical vibration as I was walking around the box. And this is not visible on the box, it's not visible at all, but it's perceived by the pendulum period and so it's really important to put this box in a on a concrete floor which is not the case here um, so the numbers shown are self-explanatory this is the serial dump the data that's sent by the pick and it's used to compute everything here and uh, it always shows the pulse duration right now we're pulsing at about 41 milliseconds um, and um, the average period, as I mentioned, is computed over uh, 10 periods, so 20 seconds. And this is the period offset in parts per million. If you would like to see more detail about this implementation of a disciplined pendulum, I have captured more information on my website such as more data, analysis, historical detail, implementation, and so on, please go to my website. The address is written underneath in the description of this video. Thank you.